Hello geometry students. We're going to start a new unit today that's all about polygons and area and circumference and perimeter and those ideas. Now what we're going to start with today is how to figure out angles in polygons. That's going to be the big thing. We're going to talk about interior angles, exterior angles, how to find the total number of degrees, how to find each angle if it's regular. And so that's the stuff that I really want to tackle today. Now I started with a little chart today. And so if you notice, I've got some information up here about a polygon, the number of sides it has, the number of triangles, which we'll talk about that in just a second, and then the number of degrees on the interior of that polygon. Now, I already filled in a couple of these because we've already talked about these. We know these. A triangle has three sides. It's only one triangle. has 180 degrees. A quadrilateral has four sides. We already know that has 360 degrees. Now, I left this one blank because I wanted to talk about that real quick. So... If I have a quadrilateral, and I'm not trying to make this any specific type of quadrilateral, just any old quadrilateral, I could split this into two triangles just by just putting in a diagonal of that. And so we've got two triangles there if we've got a quadrilateral. So let's keep going up in size or in number of sides. And so next up, what if we've got a pentagon? So we know a pentagon has five sides. So how many triangles would a pentagon have? Well, let me draw one down here. One, two, three, four, five. And again, I'm not trying to make this any special type of pentagon. Just make sure it has five sides. And if I go from one vertex and draw in all the diagonals I could make, I could make those two diagonals, which splits it into one, two, three triangles. And then... We'll worry about that last column in just a second here. Let's do one more first. And then if you had a good like pattern-seeking mind, you might be noticing a pattern. So the sides are just going up by one. Do you notice the number of triangles? It goes one, two, three. Sure looks like this one's going to be four. And just to draw it to make sure, we have one, two, three, four, five, six sides. Okay, so there's a hexagon. If I put in all the diagonals I could make from one vertex, I'm going to go from this one here. I can do one there, one there, one there. That creates one, two, three, four triangles. And so this would have four triangles. Now, the way to get this last column, the number of degrees, which is really what we're after, that's what we're trying to figure out today, is just think about how many degrees are in every triangle. We know a triangle is 180 degrees. Now, if you notice, if I have a quadrilateral, that's two triangles. Doesn't that make this 180 for this triangle, 180 for that triangle? So in total, we've got 360 degrees. If I go to a pentagon, I've got three triangles, 180 in each one. So this is 180 plus 180 plus another 180, or 180 times three you could do, um, which that gives us 540 degrees. And then for a hexagon, we've got six sides, that's four triangles that we can split this into. Each of these is 180, so I've got 180 times 4 here, basically. And 180 times 4 is 720 degrees. Now, if you notice a pattern here, if we're going by the numbers just going down the column, we're adding 180 each time. You can keep doing that. However, this is kind of the, the folly in just going with the previous number. What if I said how many total degrees are on the interior of a 50-sided polygon? Well, doing it by adding 180 each time, you'd have to do this 50 times until you get to the answer. I'd rather come up with a general formula to where we just plug in the number of sides and it automatically tells us the number of degrees on the inside. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a little jump here. Now, there are some other shapes we talked about, and if you want to like independently add a few more columns to this table just so you have it for reference, go ahead. Uh, but I'm going to stop right there and jump up to N. So we're going general now. We don't have a specific number of sides. We're using a variable. So we're saying if it has N sides, um, or if the N gone, let's call it first, which would have N sides. Now, let's think about how many triangles that would mean. If we have three sides, there's one triangle. Four sides, there's two triangles. Five sides, there's three triangles. Six sides, there's four triangles. There's a definite pattern to how this number is related to this number. Do you notice the number of triangles is always two less 
than the number of sides. And so this right here would be n minus 2 for our number of triangles. And then to figure out this column, the number of degrees, well, we basically just took however many triangles there were and multiplied that by the number of degrees in a triangle. And so since there's 180 degrees in a triangle, and there's three triangles in this case, we did 3 times 180. So if there's n minus 2 triangles, then we would want to do n minus 2, that answer, times 180 degrees. That right there is the key, or is the general formula, for how we find the sum of the interior angles. <clears throat> so that's a big part of this. We, need, we know how to find the sum of the interior angles of an n-gon now, of a polygon with n sides. And so we just plug in the number of sides for that part, and that'll give us that. Now there's one little thing that I need to put in here as well. This is actually the formula for if we have a convex polygon. If we have a concave polygon, that doesn't work. And so just a quick review of those words. Concave means the polygon goes inward at some point. Convex means every single vertex goes outward. Or if you were to extend the segments, none of them would go on to the interior of the shape. That's what makes it convex. So, here's what we're going to say. This is one of our big rules for today. The sum of the interior angles of a convex n-gon is n minus 2 times 180 degrees. Now, I want you to note the parentheses here. That's important. In other words, you take the number of sides minus 2, then take that answer times 180. Um, so keep that in mind. That is parentheses, and PEMDAS says we got to do parentheses before the multiplication, right? And so that's how we figure that out. So let's see if we can put this to use on a couple examples now. So what is the total number of interior degrees in a decagon? All right. Decagon, like decade, 10, right? So decagon is 10 sides. So we've got 10 sides in this polygon, and we want to figure out total number of interior degrees. Now, if it's a decagon, 10 sides, n is 10. And so we're going to do this with n being 10. And so we've got 10 minus 2 times 180 degrees. And so that's what we want to do to figure this out. And so to figure this out, we're going to do 8 times 180, basically, which is 1,440 degrees. Now, a lot of times I have people who are a little unhappy about this because they say, well, how can something be more than 360? Isn't 360 all the way around? And yes, that is an excellent point. But we're not going all the way around a single point. Remember, if we've got a decagon, we actually have 10 points that we're going part of the way around. And so, yes, around a single point, there is only 360 degrees. But since we have 10 points here instead, this is fine that it's way bigger than 360. All right, so there's the sum of the interior angles in a decagon. And so this means every decagon that's a convex decagon will have 1,440 degrees on the interior. Now, there's another word that I wanted to review here in this one. You notice this one says, if it is regular, what is each angle? So regular, a little reminder of that word. That word means all of the sides are exactly the same length and all of the angles are exactly the same measure. So if it's a regular decagon, all 10 of those angles are exactly the same measure. That's an important part here because if we've got a 1,440 degrees, and all 10 of the angles, we know it's 10 because it's a decagon, are exactly the same. Isn't that really what division does, is takes a number and splits it into that many equal parts? So what we want to do here is take 1,440 and cut it into 10 equal parts. That would make each angle exactly the same, which the math on this isn't too bad. Dividing by 10, we just get rid of the 0, so it's 144 degrees. It's the measure of each interior angle in a regular decagon. Now, if it's irregular, all the angles can be different things, but they have to add up to 1,440. 
If it's regular, they all have to be the same, and so each one is 144 degrees. So there's the interior part. Next up, I want to talk just a little bit about the exterior angles. And so let's see if we can figure out the sum of the measures of the exterior angles with one angle at each vertex. And so I've got an equilateral triangle here because that's easy to work with, and so we've got 60, 60, and 60 are our interior angles. Now the one at each vertex part is on here because an exterior angle, remember, is when I extend out a side. Now technically I could extend out this side or I could extend out this side. And so I could have an exterior angle there and an exterior angle here. Now if you notice they're vertical angles, they would have the exact same measure. But do you notice we're saying with just one at each vertex? So let's not do both of those, let's just do one. And so if that's 60 degrees, the big thing between an interior and an exterior angle is it makes a straight line. In other words, it always adds up to 180 degrees. And so if that's 60, the exterior angle is 120 degrees. And so I'm going to do one at the other vertices as well. That's 60, so that's 120. And then that's 60, so that's 120. So if I put one of these at each vertex, I have 120 plus 120 plus 120, because remember, we're looking for the sum of all the exterior angles. And 120 plus itself three times, or 120 times three. 360 degrees is the sum here. And so let's see if we can find a pattern to these, because we saw a pattern to the ones for interior angles. So let's think for a second about what's going to happen if I make this a quadrilateral instead. All right, so is it going to go up by 180? Um, is it going to get smaller? Is it going to stay the same? Well, let's just do one and figure out what happens here. So if each interior angle is 90, if I start to put on exterior angles, that is 90 as well, because it has to be a straight line form 180 degrees, so that means it's 90 and 90. Let's do the same thing here. That's 90 as well. Same thing here. That's 90 as well. Same thing here. 90 as well. And so we've got 90 degree angles for all four of the exterior angles. And so we've got 90 times 4. If I do 90 times 4, that equals still 360 degrees for the sum. And so do you notice we changed n, we changed the number of sides, nothing changed with the sum of the exterior angles. This will always be the same. n is actually an irrelevant variable in this. It doesn't matter how many sides there are. The answer to this doesn't even have an n in the equation. The answer to this is just 360 degrees. So the sum of the exterior angles with one at each vertex is just always 360. Now, let's see if we can put that to use. All right, what is the me measure of each angle, exterior angle of an octagon? And I just realized I wanted an extra word in here. I wanted to say of a regular octagon. So if we've got a regular octagon, what's the measure of each exterior angle? Well, the exterior angles add up to 360. And then if we want each angle and it's regular, that means all eight angles are exactly the same. So if I do 360 cut into eight equal parts or divided by eight, that tells me the measure of each exterior angle, which 360 divided by eight comes out to 45 degrees. All right, now let's try to go the other direction. Let's see if we can figure out the number of sides knowing the angle measure. So if each exterior angle of a regular n-gon is 10 degrees, what is n? All right, so let's think about this. The exterior angles always add up to 360. All right, what we don't know here is how many sides there are, but we know that each exterior angle is 10. So really, this becomes a question of how many 10-degree angles do I have to put together until I make it to 360? Or how many times does 10 go into 360, you could say? And isn't that also what division tells us, is how many times one number goes into another number or fits into another number? And so if I would do the 360 we have to get total divided by the 10 for each angle, that would tell me how many 10s I have to put together until I get 360. And 360 divided by 10 is, in this case, this would have to have 36 sides. Now, when we say what is n, or how many sides does it have, that's the exact same question. Remember, n is the variable for number of sides. And so I might ask things in either way. I might say how many sides does it have, or what is n, same question. All right, 
So if each interior angle of a regular n gon is 162, what is n? Now, I know we're talking about interior here. It seems like on this side we were talking all about exterior. I waited to do this problem because if we didn't know about exterior angles, this would actually be a much more difficult problem. But since we know about exterior angles, we can solve this fairly easily. We've got to do a little thinking. Um, more thinking and less math, basically, is, is how we can get away with doing this a little bit easier. So let's go back over here for just a second. Do you notice an interior angle and an exterior angle always add up to 180 degrees? That has to be the case. That's what makes an exterior angle just going straight on from there. So if the interior angle here is 162, now I'm not going to draw the whole shape because I don't really know how to draw it. I don't know how many sides it has. But I do know that the angle on the inside is 162 degrees. Now if I extend this side out, that tells me the angle on the outside has to be 18 degrees. And this would keep going from there and going around and you know more and more sides. So if the exterior angle is if the exterior angle is 18 degrees, then we could do what we just did right here. Basically, we need to know if each one is 18, because remember it's regular, they're all the same. So if each one is 18, if we just do 360 divided by 18, that'll tell us exactly how many of these we have. And so 360 divided by 18 tells us there must be 20 sides in this particular polygon. So there's how we can figure out, even if we have the interior angle, the exterior angle, we could figure out either way because we know the interior and exterior add up to 180. And so knowing the interior could get us the exterior. And since there's a set number that has to add to, we can figure that out to find the total number of sides knowing the interior degree measure. All right, so there's, the, there's what we have. The two big rules here to remember. If you're talking interior angles, the sum of the interior angles of a convex polygon is n minus 2 times 180 degrees. So that changes based on the number of sides. n stands for number of sides. And the sum of the exterior angles of a convex polygon is 360, period. Doesn't change based on number of sides. It's just always 360 degrees.